So friends, welcome back to our channel Learn with Gigs. So today I have invited Suresh Nakka for the live Power BI mock interview. So let's begin with the interview round and before that please do like this video and subscribe to the channel if you are new to it and you can also follow me on Instagram Learn with Gigs. Hi Suresh, can you please briefly introduce yourself first? Good afternoon session. First of all, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to introduce myself. Myself Suresh, I have 3 years experience in IT industry as a Power BI developer. My previous company organization name is Wipro. In Wipro, I worked for Airbnb Clean and my key skills are data visualization tool Power BI and the database MySQL and the cloud technology Microsoft Fabric. And in my project, we used Excel data source. So I worked for Airbnb Clean. So Suresh, you said that you have used Excel files like import mode. So where you hosted those Excel files? Locally in your laptop or it was hosted somewhere else? Yeah, we stored the data in SharePoint folder. Okay, okay, fine. So what is the maximum data that you have handled till now? 70,000 rows that I have handled in Wipro. 70,000 or 17,000? 70, 70,000. Okay, so if suppose uh, more data comes and if the data is in millions, how will you handle that level of data locally in import mode in your laptop? We can handle because recently I worked on fabric also. So Power BI has a data limitation up to 1 GB for pro service. If we have that much data, we can work. Later, we worked on some fabric also, Microsoft Fabric. If there is an N large of large data sets, so we are importing the data on Microsoft Fabric. There only we are cleaning the data. We are doing transformations in Fabric only. So later, we are importing to Power BI desktop. There we have generated the report. So suppose you have pulled few tables. For example, if you have pulled two tables in Power Query Editor in Power BI, okay. And you found that the structure of those two tables are completely same. So what you did, you appended those two tables, okay, to create a new third table, okay. Now once I do close and apply, all those three tables will be loaded in Power BI, right? So now if I don't want the first two tables, I only want to load the appended table. How can I do that? So in Power Query Editor, if you select the query right click, there is option enable. So if you click on that, the table will not reflect on Power BI desktop. Okay. So please open your chat box. So suppose you have a table and that contains a column which has values like this, which I'm pasting. And you can see uh, this, this is a kind of date, right? But Power yeah, BI okay. is not automatically able to detect this data type to date, right? So how will you yeah, yeah. convert this column into a date column? So we have to first of all load this data into Power BI desktop. So open Power Core Editor. In Power Core Editor, there is a option called custom from example. So if you select the custom from example and if you click on this column, you will get the new column on right side. If you double click on that, it will show the different types of date format. And we can select which type of date format we need. So then it converted into date. So like okay. this we can do. So are you sure with this answer? Yeah, sure. I implemented also. It's working. Okay. So I'm pasting another set of uh, queries. You can see in the chat box. So suppose you have two tables. You can see. Okay. Table A and table B. So table A contains uh, uh, entries like apple, mango, null, orange, mango. And table B contains values like apple, mango, null, orange, null, apple, orange. What will be the resultant of left outer, inner join? as well as left NT merge option. Can you write the output in the chat box? Yeah, first of all, I will write for inner. So inner for inner join, we'll get the matching records from both the tables. So here we have apple, mango, orange. So for inner join, you are saying three records will be coming, which is apple, mango, orange. Yeah, we will get three apple, mango and orange. Okay, and what about left outer? So left outer means all the records from the left table and only matching records from the right table it will give. Mm -hmm. So these are the four records we'll get if you apply, if we apply left outer join. Okay, four records if you go for left outer, apple, mango, orange, null. Okay, what will, the, what will be the result of left anti join? For left anti means if there is no matching records on the left table, that the records will display in the output. So I think for this table, left hand table will not possible. Okay, so it will be blank according to you, right? Yeah, yeah, yes. Okay. Do you know about what is cardinality in Power BI, in Power BI modeling basically? Yeah, we have one to one relationship, one to many relationship, many to one relationship and many to many relationship. So what do you mean by cardinality? So it's a relationship, it's a relationship between the two tables. 
okay suppose there are two tables and they both have no common column okay so you won't be able to connect them you, you won't be able to connect any kind of or create any kind of relationship between those two tables how will you handle this kind of scenario if we have these kind of two tables and we have do nothing common between them and if you have to uh, make a relationship between them how will you do that so there is no column so we can create a new dummy table yeah based on the dummy table we have to remove if we have to create all unique values for the columns so there is a date table so the date column in one particular table now so we can take some date master table and we can create a unique values on the date so we can make relationship the both the tables okay what what is the advantage of having a star schema in the model so the star schema means uh, all dimension tables are connected with one fact table which is called star schema so because of star schema the performance will, will increases compared to other schemas and the star schema will be more easier compared to other schemas so the structure of star schema also it looks somewhat easier so there will be a one fact table behind the fact table there will be all the dimension table so by seeing the structure only we can identify and we can get somewhat easier by calculating the data what kind of dax functions you have used till now yeah it's a airbn process no? it's a time traveling period so we are we have to calculate month wise year wise so we use mostly on uh, like uh, dates so it is the same period the same period last year and parallel period by 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 year on year month on month so like okay. that i have done some dax so for example okay so for example uh, for airbnb client if suppose we have to calculate year over year growth for airbnb yeah. how will you write the dax measure for that i pasted my answer in the chat box year on year sales so for finding year on year sales we need total sales minus previous year sales have to divided by previous year sales we have to calculate the percentage that's we are calculating mm -hmm. 200 so we will how will you year on year sales how will you generate that previous year sales measure yeah I pasted the query in the chat box so we have okay. to calculate previous year sales by using calculate sum of by date of sales so we have to use previous year function then we have to go date must of date we will get the previous year okay, what is the difference between previous year and same period last year previous year means it will give data for last year so suppose there is 2025 now january it will give like 2024 data like january february year 2024 calendar year it will give the data coming to same period last year so today is 19th jan so at 19th jan 2025 how much sales are happened so we are checking on 2024 19th jan how many sales are happened so on particular day on same year so it is the same period last year okay so what will be your preferred uh, dax function so according to you it will be previous year instead of same period last year right yeah okay so you have used a lot of time intelligence functions so can you tell me the difference between total ytd function and dates ytd function coming to dates ytd function dates ytd means year to date so if there is a year suppose 2024 year we need the data from particular month to particular date so january we need starting from january when to we need from october 24 like that on a particular date we are closing the sales so we need particular starting on a particular end on the particular day it is called dates by td and coming to total by td we are calculating the total sales from starting year day to on a particular day how much sales are happening we are, we are sum we have to do the sum it's called total by TV. okay so are you sure about the difference yes okay can we use these time intelligence functions if you are connecting our database in the direct query mode yeah some time intelligence functions can be used in direct query mode fine what is the difference between count and count rows dax function count rows means it will calculate all the rows in that table count means it will not calculate the blank rows it is the difference for both okay so suppose uh, for the airbnb client that you mentioned uh, you need to show the end user the business user what is the last week sales or last week last week transactions total transactions so how will you write the dax code for it so dynamically you need to show that last week transaction value we have dates between dax function so by using dates between dax function we can find out the sales of particular 10 days or a particular week or a particular month we can find out like that 
and if you used to show the sales in last year or last two, two years, three years, you have dates in period DAX function. So like that, we can show our data dynamically. Okay. Yeah. What what kind of uh, visuals you have used in Power BI? Yeah, I have used a default chart, say like a pie chart, donut chart, line chart. Some what what is the difference between pie chart and uh, donut chart? So pie chart is in a circle shape, which has uh, slices. So we can add up to seven fields in the pie chart. More than seven, it will be somewhat not uh, clear. The chart will be some clumsiness. And the pie chart will show the data in the percentage wise. So coming to donut chart also, it will show the values in percentage only. But coming to donut chart, it is a circle shape. But in circle shape, there is a small circle inside. It's like a donut shape totally. So it is a difference. But in both pie chart and uh, donut chart the data will be shown percentage wise only okay do you know how to set up custom tool tips yeah custom tool tips yeah there is a page navigation now so there is a option like custom tool tip if you select the custom tool tip it will get uh, we have to create one chart visual which type of model we need so there is a tool tip option we have to drag there if we select one one chart one field like tool tip so there it will reflect it. What are the charts we prepare? So the custom tool, what we prepare, it will be visible there. If we select, a, suppose there is a bar chart, there is 10 bars. If you select one, if you hover on the one bar, the custom tool will display there. Okay. So you custom said in the starting that you have set up uh, row level security, right? For the client. So yeah. how, yeah, how yeah. do you define row level security in Power BI desktop? Yeah. The purpose of row level security it is used to restrict the rows for certain users so there are two types of row level security static row level security and dynamic row level security so the static row level security we have to give the filters by our own so if there are um, four or five filters we can do so if there is a hundred or thousand we have to do then we have to go for dynamic row level security so in dynamic row level security there is a for role level security, we have to give viewer role only. So other roles will not work in dynamic role level security. In role level security, we have to give viewer access only for everybody. So here are the steps to implement role level security. We have to go to modeling, the manage roles. We have to create a new role. After creating a role, no, there is a region name, table name, and the filter we have to give, and the column name. After we have to save it. And we have to publish the report into workspace. After going to the workspace, we have the manage axis and we have to do the waiver axis to whom we have to show the report. After giving the viewer access to them, we have to come to security in the data set. There is three options. Click on the three options, go to security. And after clicking on the security, you will find on the roles on the left side. And clicking on the each role and you have to do the mail axis whom we have to see the particular role. So it is a row level sec static row level security for four or five members we can go like that if there is a hundred or thousand members we have to go with dynamic row level security so for dynamic row level security we have to create a relationship and coming to the power bi desktop while giving the roles we have to give a role name with the user principal name so then after save it same again go to power bi service and give the viewer access click on the data set three dots go to security and we will see the roles in there so like that i have applied okay. implemented the role level security do you know about data gateways and uh, if you know about it uh, in what case we have to use a data gateway yeah gateway is a one-time ship application so it's an um, on-premises data from the cloud and there are two types of gateways like standard gateway in personal gateways, standard gateways are uh, used in real-time scenarios. Personal gateways is used for personal work purpose. And the gateways are used for mainly for refreshing we need gateways. So for what particular data sources or what kind of data sources we need a data gateway? So for on-premises uh, data sources, we need a standard gateway in our local mission. Okay. So you said uh, you have the experience in uh, developing the report and publishing to the Power BI service and finally sharing the report to the end users. How did you use to share the reports to the end users? Was there, was there in particular so, way? Yeah, I shared the reports in Outlook. So there is a share option. 
So if we click on the chair option, it will show some options like Teams, Outlook. So I will select the Outlook and I will go the mail axis and I will click send so I can share. So manually you used to send the reports to the end users? Yes. So there that were limits. So there were limited end users or because it is a manual action, right? Yeah, actually we sent to only some two to three persons only because they have to validate our reports now. So okay. while every monthly after creating some changes, so we are sharing our reports to them. They are validating our report. If everything is fine, they are accepted. If they need some changes like fonting, font changes, color changes, logo changes, if they need some other changes, so every week we have one day client meeting. So they will do all the reviews on the report. So like that we have processing. Okay, Suresh, uh, uh, I'm done from my side. Thank you so much for attending this mock interview. So if you're watching this video, let me know in the comment box if you have better answers for the questions that he has answered or if he has answered something wrong. So you can just comment it down so that it is useful for all other people. Thank you so much, Suresh. Thank you so much, Cheshen.